One Way Baptist Church, under the leadership of our senior pastor, Samuel L. Bull Sr., welcomes you to What's on the Agenda and the News You Can Use for May 27th through June 3rd, 2022. The May prayer request booklets are available in the church foyer. Our prayers may be awkward, our attempts may be feeble, but since the power of prayer is in the one who hears it and not in the one who says it, our prayers do make a difference. All OWBC leaders, please note your calendars and plan to attend the leadership meeting on June 13th at 6.45 p.m. Wednesday Bible Studies, June 1st. After COVID Facts with Pastor Bull at 6.30 p.m. Student Ministry also at 6.30 p.m. Thursday Morning Bible Study, June 2nd. GPS, God's Precious Seniors, with Pastor Emeritus Bernard Buell meets at 10 a.m. Success takes every person with a unified purpose. Beginning in June, each member is asked to give an additional $25 per week minimum towards the step-up commitments. Please use these green envelopes for your gifts during service. If you are giving online, please be sure to select the step-up option shown here. His Simple Health Ministry, Health Matters, May 29, 2022. In helping to prevent a stroke, maintain a good relationship with your doctor. This will help manage conditions that can increase your risk of stroke, such as high blood pressure and diabetes. Lowering the diastolic blood pressure, the lower number on the reading by five millimeters, can reduce the risk of stroke by up to 35%. And in general, living a healthy lifestyle, eating fresh foods, exercising, consuming less salt, not smoking, and drinking less can help prevent up to 80% of strokes. If people can consume five servings of fruits and vegetables a day, they will reduce their stroke risk by 30%. For Black Americans, that means we need to be able to find healthy, fresh food in our neighborhoods. Our awareness thought, fast food isn't the means to good health. Come back next month for more health matters from His Temple Health Ministry. Sunday Worship Experience. We invite you to join us each Sunday morning at 9 a.m. for a one-way worship experience. You may join us via social media, on our Facebook and YouTube pages. We would love to have you join us in person for the full worship experience. Wearing your mask is optional if you have been fully vaccinated, including your booster. However, everyone, please use the hand sanitizer provided before entering the sanctuary. We look forward to worshiping with you on Sunday. And our thought for the week, don't let circumstances distress you. Rather, look for the will of God for your life to be revealed in and through those circumstances. Have an abundantly blessed week. And from the desk of Pastor Bull, don't let the devil steal your joy.
thank you that you gave us traveling grace today Father God we pray Father God that our hearts be open for the word this morning Father God and right now we're praying for those families in Uvalde Father God we don't understand Father God but we know your will be done Father God continue to lift up those in you in the Ukraine Father God and all the war torn countries Father God we pray Father God that you would continue to Lift up this pastor, Father God, and this work he's doing here, Father God. You will continue to have that hedge of protection around him, Father God. You will continue to lift up Lady A, Father God. We ask, Father God, that you lift up all our families, Father God. We ask, Father God, that you continue to just touch this work that's going on in one way, Father God. Father God, we ask all these things in your precious and holy name. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. If you could turn with me to Psalms 37. And starting with verse 4. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. May God add a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of his word. You may be seated. So there'll be a video right after the prayer. So if not, we'll go ahead and proceed. All right, let's stand back. Okay. Look at somebody and tell them, expect the great. Tell them again, tell them, expect the great. Expect the great.
Chosen Reservoir, the jungles of Vietnam, and the deserts and mountains of Iraq and Afghanistan. What they gave us is beyond our power to repay. So all we can do is remember them. We see them in our minds as old and wise. When most of them were so young. And when they died, they gave up two lives. The one they were living and the one they would have lived. No weapon in the world is more formidable than the will and courage of free men and women. The price for this freedom at times has been high. But we have never been unwilling to pay 
that price. There are those who say that we are in a time when there are no heroes. They just don't know where to look.
Everyone to your feet. If you know that he's excellent, give him an excellent praise. God, here we are again, your children. We come as an empty pitcher before a full fountain. We come standing in the need of a breakthrough, standing in the need of a blessing. We come with bowed heads and humble hearts, first asking you to forgive us things that we've said or done that's been contrary to your will. Creating us a clean heart and renew the right spirit within us. Then we come to God just to say thank you for being so good, so kind, so merciful unto us. Not only looking beyond our faults, but looking right at our faults and still supplying us with our needs. We say thank you. So much is going on in this world to God, but you spared our lives, and here we are again in your house to give you praise, glory, and honor. Somebody's here with a broken heart. Somebody's here, don't know which way to go. Somebody here have not accepted you as their personal Savior. Somebody's here today, and all hell has broken loose. I pray in the name of Jesus that we will not leave here the same way we came. That we put it all in your hands. We put the this and the that in your hands. Pray to God for your word this morning. Let your word go forth. Let your word go forth. Let it prick the hearts, touch the hearts, minds, ears of your people to receive your word. And God, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, of strength and our Redeemer. Hide me behind the cross to God. So much so that people will see or hear none of me but all of thee. God, when we leave this place on today, we know without a shadow of doubt that we've given you everything back to you, what you've given to us. We praise your name. We worship your name. We told you hallelujah. We told you thank you, Jesus. We told you that we love you. We leave it all on the altar. Move in a special way. Bless all of the sick. Shut in those behind prison walls, those in hospitals, nursing facilities. Even somebody here in this building that really needs you and don't know how they're going to make it. I pray to God that you would allow them to look to the hills from which cometh their help. For all of our help comes from you. Move in a special way. 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 In the strong, powerful name of Jesus, we ask it all. God, whatever we feel in asking, please don't feel it granted to us. In Jesus' name we pray. All the people of God said amen and amen. Come on, bless the Lord. If he's excellent, give him an excellent praise. Amen. There is a word I want to lift from a classic piece of scriptorial real estate. Maybe you've come across it a time or two on your journey with the Lord. And I pray that the Lord will give us some fresh water from a familiar well. Open your Bibles to the book of Ephesians, chapter 6, verses 6 through 10. Verses 6, verses 10 through 15. While you're finding that, let me just thank God for another opportunity to preach his word. I praise and thank God for my wife, 
in the absence of Lady A and to our magnificent ministers, Grantham and Enchil and their wonderful wives, our delightful deacons and their dazzling deaconesses, our marvelous ministry leaders, glamorous GPS, sensational student ministry, upscale ushers, our mighty music ministry under the leadership of the majestic minister of music, and dedicated drummer, victorious VSL, our super safety, generous greeters, pleasant parking lot. To our Facebook and YouTube family, you, my heavenly fathers, children and visitors alike, the book of Ephesians, chapter number six. Commence reading at verse 10, concluding at verse 16. I want to drop my anchor at verse number 15. And I will be reading from the New International Version translation of the Bible. If you don't have that, it will be on the screen. When you have it, these words are recorded. Finally, be strong in the Lord and his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the devil, the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything, to stand. Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist with the breastplate of righteousness in place. 15th and final verse and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. Amen. Thank you so much. You may be seated in the presence of God. The grass withereth and the flower faded thereof but the word of our God shall stand forever. I want to preach this morning with your prayers and needing God's power from these words. Look at your neighbor and tell him you can't quit. That's the wrong one. Try another one. Tell him you can't quit. That's what we're going to talk about this morning. You can't quit. Amen. Thank you so much, ushers. You can't quit. As we look at this narrative, we are privileged to see yet another aspect of the personality of the Apostle Paul. If you ever get an opportunity to read the Paulinian epistles, which are those letters or books penned by the Apostle Paul, the one constant in all of those letters is the opportunity we have as readers to see how varied and how vivid the personality and trace of Paul comes through in his writings. When you read Paul's letters, it is as if Paul becomes an entirely different person or takes on a new personality depending on who or what he is addressing at that particular time. For instance, when you read the Pauline epistles, you can read uh, that Paul expresses, he adjusts his personality style depending on whom or what he's writing his letters to. Here's what I'm talking about. When Paul wrote his second letter to his spiritual son, Timothy, in the ministry. Paul was looking like a concerned father. 
who was writing to encourage his son to reach the fullness of his potential. When Paul wrote to the church at Philippi, Paul is being portrayed as an athlete who was so committed to winning until the one thing he does is forget those things that are behind and reach and strive to press toward the mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus. When Paul wrote to the Corinthian church, Paul was betrayed as a wise master builder, one whose job was to lay a foundation of Jesus Christ upon which other persons could build their lives and their hopes upon. When Paul wrote to the church in Galatians, Paul is betrayed as a defense attorney who was defending his calling by God to be an apostle of Jesus Christ. However, brothers and sisters, in this particular text, Paul is not betrayed as an athlete or a concerned father. He's not betrayed as a wise master builder or a defense attorney. But in this particular narrative, Paul is betrayed as a commander in chief on who takes charge of an army who is commanding his troops to take a stance against the enemy. In fact, on four different occasions between verses 10 through uh, verse 15, Paul alludes to standing. Paul is not asking. Paul is not making a request. But Paul is demanding that they take a stance against the enemy. And please note, brothers and sisters, that when you look at our text this morning, Paul's tone has changed. His demeanor has changed. For those of you who are familiar with the Ephesians account, earlier in this book, Paul is more appeasing. He is more passive. In fact, in Ephesians chapter number 4, verse number 1, Paul begs them. Paul says, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, here it is, beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called. In chapter 4, Paul is begging he is beseeching, he is asking them to live a certain kind of way. And he is asking them to walk in a certain kind of way. But now, two chapters later, in chapter 6, verse 10 through 15, Paul is not begging anymore. He is not asking anymore. His tone has changed. He is not speaking passively, but he is speaking with more power and persuasion. Paul says, I dare you. I charge you. I'm commanding, I'm demanding that you stand up against the enemy. Look at your neighbor and tell him you got to stand. Paul's, Paul's tone has changed. Paul's tone now is that you can't quit. Paul is demanding his troops that no matter what you do, you have to take a stance against the enemy. And what's interesting, brothers and sisters, is that, that, that Paul, he commands them to stand, watch this, knowing who and what they're up against. He tells them to stand knowing that what they're up against is going to challenge the very fabric of their faith. You see, my brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, anybody can stand when you're not standing up against anything. It don't take much to stand when your faith is not being challenged. It doesn't take much to stand when your back is not against the wall. But Paul is right, and watch this, to a people who he knew was going through trial and tribulation. Paul, Paul is writing to a group of people that Paul knew without a shadow of a doubt that they felt like throwing in the towel. They, Paul is writing to a group of people who felt like waving the white flag. And I want to know, am I on anybody's street this morning? 
Paul is writing to a group of people that he knew was on the verge of being attacked by the devil. In fact, it is, it, it, it is interesting that when you look at this particular text, Paul describes who they're up against. Paul says in verse number 11, you still have your Bibles open, don't you? That you will be going up against the devil. And in verse 11, he admits that the person that the believers are going up against is deceptive. Somebody shout deceptive. He, he, he's deceptive because in verse 11, Paul says the devil's schemes. In the King James Version, he used the word wiles of uh, the devil. In the NIV, he used the word the schemes or the chicanery, the, the trickery of the devil. Paul said that the person that we are going up against is deceptive. And not only is the enemy deceptive, but verse 12 suggests that he is departmentalized. Somebody shout departmentalized. Because he has powers and principalities he has spiritual wickedness, rulers of darkness. Somebody ought to help me preach here this morning. Paul said that the person that you're going up with, he is deceptive, verse 11. He is departmentalized, verse 12. But in verse 16, he even has darts. These darts are fiery darts. So Paul, watch this, writes this letter to this church, Paul is saying, I know what you're up against. You're going up against an invisible foe who is deceptive, who he is departmentalized. He has fiery darts that he is going to aim at you to take you out. He's tricky. He's wildly. He has marshaled forces in high places. He has principalities. He has powers. He has rulers of darkness. He has all this ammunition designed to take you out. But if you're going to be effective against the devil, you can't quit. You've got to learn how to stand your ground. Look at your neighbor, tell them, stand your ground. And I wanted to look at this text. I feel pretty good here now. Because I've discovered that standing is harder than it sounds. It's easy to tell somebody to stand, and therefore I had to talk to the apostle Paul because I needed to know how is it possible to stand up against an enemy like this? How is it possible to stand up against the devil? I'm on the verge of losing my mind. I'm on the verge of walking off my job. I'm on the verge of leaving this relationship. I'm on the verge of throwing in the towel. How is it possible to take a stand? Can I preach it like I feel it this morning? Because if you're really honest, brothers and sisters, with yourself, even the most sure-footed of us feel like giving up sometime. I guess I'm in here by myself. Is there anybody here besides me who ever felt like walking out? Is there anybody who ever felt like telling the Lord, this is more than what I signed up for? This is more than what I bargained for. You ain't got to admit it, but Psalm 73, verse 1 and 2. In the NIV, ASAP says, surely God is good to Israel. I wish I had a Bible reader. To those who are pure in heart. He said, but as for me, my foot almost slipped. I want to help somebody in this house today. So Paul, Paul, four times, he tells them to take a stand. But I need to know, Paul, how do I stand when I feel the pressure of life on my shoulders? How can I stand? How can I stand when it seems like every time I try to take one step forward, the devil knocks me back two steps? can I stand when it seems like nothing is working out? It's easy to stand when children are doing well. 
what, what, what about when them jokers is getting on your last good nerve? It's easy to stand when you got two or three dollars extra in your pocket. What about when you're broke as Cooter Brown? It's easy to stand when you can see God and see God working in your life. But what about when you stand and there is no traces of God? Paul says, stand. And I, got, and I got a question. I had to ask Paul. I had to ask Paul one question. Paul, how can I take my stand? What tools do I have to help me stand with the enemy is rushing in like a flood? How? How? How can I stand? I, got, I just got two points this morning, so y'all better hurry up and get on this train because I see the caboose near. Paul says, in order to stand, first of all, he says, you got to have your shoes on. And the shoes gives you, here it is, number one, permanence in the fight. Permanence in the fight. Touch yourself and say, put your shoes on. The NIV doesn't do it justice because the NIV just says, and with your feet, Fitted with the readiness that comes with the gospel of peace. But when you look at the living Bible translation, it says it like this. It Wear shoes that are able to speed you on as you preach the good news of peace with God. It's, a, it's something about the shoes. Your shoes will help you stand. Let me see if I can help you. Uh, in 1991, some of 1991, there was a Nike commercial that aired featuring the new Air Jordans. And the commercial starred Michael Jordan and filmmaker Spike Lee. Spike Lee was in his character, Mars Blackman. Some of y'all might remember that. And so Mars Blackman was asking Michael Jordan a series of questions. Mars Blackman says, Michael, uh, what makes you the best player on the planet? Is it, is it your thunderous dunks? And Michael Jordan said, no, Mars, it's not the dunks. Then Mars Blackman asked Michael, is it the extra long shorts? Michael Jordan said, no, Mars, it's not the shorts. Mars Blackman says, well, is it your stylish haircut? He had hat in. And Michael Jordan said, no, Mars, it's not my haircut. Then Mars says, is it the short socks? Michael Jordan says, no, Mars, it's, 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 it's not the short socks. And Mars says, well, I know what it is. It's got to be the shoes. Money, it has to be the shoes. And when I thought about that, uh, that's what Paul is saying, brothers and sisters. Paul is saying, if you're going to stand, you got to make sure you have the right shoes on. Because the shoes of the gospel will keep you standing. The shoes of the gospel. When the enemy comes at you, brothers and sisters, it will keep you standing. Let me tell you something. The conflict, brothers and sisters, that the Roman soldiers engaged in was a hand-to-hand -hand combat. And the Roman soldier knew that if I'm going to be successful in hand-to-hand -hand combat, I have to make sure I maintain my center of gravity. Are, are y'all praying with me? I got to make sure that my feet don't slip. Because if I ever lose my balance in hand-to-hand -hand combat, the enemy can pin me down. And so what the soldier did prior to going on the battlefield, he would get a hammer and nails and hammer nails through the soles of his shoes to make sure that when he stood on slippery ground, come on, help me here, somebody, the nails gripped the ground that he was standing on. He hammered nails in the soles of his shoe to make sure that when he was in hand-to-hand -hand comeback, the, the nails gripped 
the ground. Come and let me talk to you. Whenever you put the gospel of, on your feet, your feet is gripping the gospel. And the gospel would keep you from slipping. You want to know why the track star wears gripped shoes? So they won't slip when they come out the blocks. I wish I had some help up in here. You want to know why the football players, uh, when, when it gets slippery, they change their spikes because they want to grip the ground so they won't be slipping. I wish I had some help up in here. Brothers and sisters, whenever you put the gospel on your feet, your feet is gripping the gospel, and the gospel will keep you from slipping. The gospel will keep you from falling. Every time you're going up against the enemy, you have to make sure your shoes are the gospel. Whenever your feet are sharp, ready with the gospel, that gives you permanence. Somebody shout permanence in the fight. Permanence in the sense that it keeps you from slipping. Even when you want to give up, you can't give up because your feet are stuck. The gospel is gripping you so much so that when you want to walk out, you can't walk out. When you want to surrender, you can't surrender. When you want to leave, you can't leave. When you want to run away, you can't run away because there's something stronger than you that's keeping you planted. There ought to be at least about 27 of y'all in here that can testify that there's been some times and some situations that you wanted to walk out of. But you didn't leave because the gospel grabbed you, gave you permanence in the fight. That's one of the things that I share with all couples that I uh, counsel, that if you want to make it to five, you got to get past one, two, three, four. You want to make it to 20, you got to get past five, 10, 15. You ain't going to make it to 20 if you stop at one. I wish I had some help in here. You got to be able to withstand. Sometimes you want to get out. I wish I had some real folks in here. I know he's sitting next to you. You can't say nothing. Just look straight ahead and say, hmm, amen, pastor. You got to have permanence in the fight. Even when you're too weak to fight, some kind of way you stood still and you took the punishment, you took the scandal, you took the lies, and other friends were looking at you trying to figure out how in the world you can take this. I'll tell you how I can take it. I got my shoes on. And the gospel of Jesus Christ shielded me and allowed me to take a licking and keep on ticking. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning, but I want to challenge somebody that in the midst of the battle, don't take your shoes off. Whenever you feel like giving up, whenever you feel like walking from, from where God has placed you, make sure that your feet are grabbing the gospel. Because the gospel will keep you. Do I have a witness here? I said the gospel will keep you uh, when you don't want to be kept. I see you, I see you, I see you. some of y'all looking like you're looking. Uh, the gospel will keep you planted when, when you want to walk out. When you got a reason to walk out. When you got a plan to walk out. When you have a desire to walk out. God will keep you right, as old folks say, right there. Is there anybody here that know without a shadow of a doubt that you would have been gone a long time ago if the gospel hadn't grabbed you? Watch this, but watch this. Paul says, Paul says, it's the gospel. Get on, I'm, I'm, I'm on the second one. It's the gospel of peace. Somebody shout peace. Because, because the gospel grabs me, and I'm grounded by the gospel, it literally means that in the midst of the battle, God gives me permanence. However, he not only gives me permanence in the battle, number two, he gives me peace with the battle. 
gives me peace with the battle because what's grabbing me is the gospel of peace. Now, when you look at this text, it looks as if peace doesn't belong in this passage because he's talking about war. Are y'all with me? He, he's talking about warfare. In fact, when you look at the other pieces of the armor, all of them speak of warfare. You have the shield of faith. You have the sword of the spirit. You have a helmet of salvation. You have a breastplate of righteousness. You have a belt that's holding on, on your tools. However, in the midst of all of these articles that directly speaks of warfare, he talks about peace. And it looks as if peace doesn't even belong in this passage. But you have to understand, brothers and sisters, the power of God's peace. And when you understand the power of God's peace, you then understand that peace deserves to be a part of the equipment. And to best illustrate that, brothers and sisters, the power of God's peace, you got you to gotta, you gotta read Philippians chapter number 4, verse number 7. Uh, because when you read Philippians chapter 4, verse 7, it really magnifies and illustrates a, and explains the power of God's peace. Turn over there with me right quick. Philippians chapter 4, verse number 7. I'm going to read from the English uh, translation version. It says right over there in Philippians chapter 4, verse number 7, it says this, And the peace of God, God Almighty, which surpasses our understanding. Here it is. Will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Let me say that slow so I can say it some more. And the peace of God. Let me hear you shout, the peace of God. First of all, brothers and sisters, it's a peace that blows your mind. It's a peace that you can't understand. It's a peace that you cannot comprehend. However, it also says it will guard your hearts and your mind. Church folk don't know when to shout. And the word God, brothers and sisters, really defines how powerful God's peace really is. Because the word guard it implies, watch this, a century of individuals. It implies a troop of people stationed on the outside of your mind, on the outside of your heart that keep certain people away. I'm going to come get some of y'all just a minute. And allow certain people to come in. Watch this. It's like a security guard on the outside of a building that you go to uh, get clearance before you can come through the door. It implies that the thought of a security person on the outside of a development, that before you can come into a gated community, you got to give your name, your ID, you got to state your purpose. The word, the word God means that, 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 that there are centuries of individuals standing on the outside of your heart, on the outside of your mind. And before somebody can come into your mind or into your heart, they have to get permission from the century. Therefore, when depression tries to enter your mind, the peace of God says, Halt! Who goes there? State your name and your purpose. When depression tries to get into your heart, the peace of God says, Oh, who goes there? I wish I had some help in here. State your name and your purpose. When haters try to depress you, the peace of God says, Oh, who goes there? State your name and state your purpose. When folk try to get on your last nerve, when you have the peace of God, the peace of God says, Oh, who goes there? State your name and your purpose. And if the peace of God don't give them permission to come to your mind and in your heart, that means you can walk around, folk, and they don't even get on your nerve. Walk around them corrupt co-workers and smile. And I wonder, I made him mad. He's still happy. That's because I got the peace of God. Huh? 
Let me see if I can close this little message here. We can go and get us some. Uh, yeah, that's what we're going to go get. Let me tell you something. Some years ago, Senator John McCain went over to Iraq and he was walking through Fallujah. He came back to the United States and he declared out of his own mouth that there was peace in Iraq. He declared that he walked through downtown marketplace in Fallujah and there were no traces of hostility. There were no insurgent troops all around. He didn't have any body armor. He declared there was peace in the Middle East. And there was peace. However, what they did not see was this. There were eight armed soldiers all around John McCain. There were two soldiers with M60s in front of him. Two soldiers with, with an M60 behind him. Two soldiers with M60s on both sides of him. Watch this. And he was able to walk through hostile territory and declare that there was peace. He was able to walk in downtown Iraq and come back to the United States and declare that there was peace in the Middle East. Brothers and sisters, that's what God does for us. You can be in the midst of hostile situation. You can be in the midst of a hostile environment. I wish I had some help in here. And declare that there is still peace. Not because war is not there, but because you serve the kind of God that would put angels before you. Angels behind you. And angels are on both sides of you. And you can lift up your voice and declare that there is peace. Have I got a witness here? Look at your neighbor and tell them, I don't know about you, uh, but I got peace. Tell them, I don't know about you, but in the midst of my situation, I've got peace. Not because hell ain't raging. Not because... The storm is not raging. Not because the wind is not blowing, but I have peace in the midst of my situation because the gospel of Jesus Christ and because I have permanence in the midst of my battle and peace with my battle. I can tell the enemy uh, that I can't quit. Have I got a witness here? I don't have to leave my job. I don't have to leave my assignments. I don't have to leave my church. I don't have to leave my marriage. And I ain't got to go nowhere because God will give you a peace. Yeah, Lord, that surpasses understanding. So I want to encourage somebody today. Don't you go anywhere. I don't know what you're going up against. Maybe you feel like giving up. I don't know. Maybe you're tired. Maybe you're weary. But I heard God saying, be not weary in well-doing, and you will reap if you faint not. Have I got a witness here? I heard God saying, if you wait on me, if you wait on him, God will, I said God will, renew your strength. You will mount up with wings as eagles. You shall run and not be weary. Oh, you shall walk and not pain. So I want to tell you today, you can't quit. Did you hear what I said? You can't quit. You can't quit. Hold on. Hold on. You're too close to turn around. You can't quit. You got to have custom shoes on. Not gators, but the gospel. Did you hear what I said? You got to make sure 
that you're standing on the word of God. You can't quit. Don't allow your situation and pressure to call you to quit. The devil is trying to move you, but you can't quit. Better days are coming. Did you hear what I said? Better days are coming. Better days are coming as believers. Brothers and sisters, our feet must grip the gospel. And when the storm comes, even though I sway, I don't move because I got an ankle. Did you hear what I said? I got an anchor. I'm clothing when I tell you this about a gentleman and his friend that went fishing one day on a small lake outside of a city and they dropped their anchor in shallow water. As they were fishing, the fish wasn't biting in that particular spot, and they decided to go to another spot. However, they forgot to pull up the anchor. So when the boat took off, it just started going in circles. Did you hear what I said? It just started going in circles. And the question was asked, you mean? that the anchor was more powerful than the engine on that boat. The man on the boat said, maybe it wasn't, but what the anchor was gripping was, did you hear what I said? And I don't know what your anchor is holding on to, but if it's gripping the gospel, even when you try to leave, you can't go nowhere because your anchor is gripping something stronger than what they're trying to move. And that anchor is Jesus. Jesus. That anchor is Jesus. Mary's baby. Jesus. Bread when you're hungry. Jesus. Water when you're thirsty. Jesus. Wheel in the middle of a wheel. But be sure that your anchor holds and grip the solid rock. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. You can't quit. You can't quit. Whatever you do, you can't quit. Just hold on. Help is on the way. Help is on the way. Find you somebody and tell them you can't quit. Everyone, please stand to your feet. We extend this invitation. If you don't know Christ as your Savior, come on. Come to this altar. Accept Christ. Confess with your mouth. Believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. He said, thou shalt be saved. If you have a relationship with God, but you backslid, the Bible says all have sinned. Come short of the glory of God. Problem is not falling. It's staying down there. You got to get up. If you're looking for a church home, you're in the right place at the right time. Come. Though the storms keep on raging in my life And sometimes it's hard to tell the night from day Still that hope that lies within is reassured. Will you come as I keep my eyes upon the distant shore? I know he'll lead me safely through that blessed place 
he has prepared. Someone else wants to come. Come on, give the Lord a hand of praise. But he song don't see and if the winds keep on blowing blowing in my life my soul has been The storm keep on raging in my life, and sometimes it's hard to tell the night from day. Still, that hope that lies within is reassured. As I keep my eyes upon the distant shore, I know he'll lead me safely through that blessed place he has prepared. But if the songs don't see Someone else wants to come. And if the winds uh, keep on blowing, uh, blowing in my life, my soul has been. gonna be taught by the waves and the currents. I wish I had some help that seems so fierce. But in the word of God, I got an anchor and it keeps me steadfast, unmovable. The song don't cease, and just in case the winds keep on blowing in my life, my soul, my soul been anchored in, in, in the Lord. In, in the Lord, in the Lord, in the Lord, my, 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 my soul, my, my, my soul, my soul has been angered, my soul has been angered, my soul has been angered, my, 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 My soul, my soul, my soul, my soul. Listen, listen. The billows may roll, the breakers may dash. I shall not sway because he holds me fast. So dark today, the cloud in the sky. I know it's all right. Jesus is mine. Set my soul. My my soul, my soul, my 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 soul, my soul, my soul, my soul, my soul has been 
this being the Memorial Day weekend, I remember my mother used to cook this big pot of beef stew. She cooked it for 12 to 14 people. Uh, and the worry would be, well, how was the stew? And you say, well, it was good, but it didn't have any meat in it. <laughs> now, Pastor, that message was packed with Irish meat. You had chicken, you had beef, you had some ham and some turkey in there. Yes, you go. And to First Lady, A, <laughs> our precious First Lady, A, we pray that God continue to bless you. Please continue to go online for our weekly announcements. You go to the One Way website and just click on the news you can use. Do we have any first time visitors with us this morning? If so, would you please stand for words of welcome? Amen. 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 Well, on behalf of Pastor Bull and the entire stand, stand, we want to welcome you. On behalf of Pastor Bull and our one way family, we are so pleased and we thank God for your presence today for participating in our service today. We hope something was said that would touch your heart to encourage you to continue your journey with the Lord. Amen. We pray God's travel grace upon you for, as you return to your destination. And if you're looking for a church home, we'd love to have you join us here in one way where we love God and we love people. Amen, amen, amen. And our thought for the week. God is still in charge and is still in control. He is before you, beside you, and bes behind you. He is your keeper, your refuge, and your strength. Don't ever quit trusting in God. Have a wonderful and safe Memorial Day weekend and a blessed week. Thank you. Come on, give the Lord another hand of praise. Thank you so much, Sister Griffin, for those announcements. I pray that you would govern yourself accordingly. Amen. Let me make a few observations. We're going to go from this place. Let me just say to our visitors again, I will piggyback on what Sister Griffin. Thank you so much for being a part of this worship experience. And uh, ain't no need of you leaving here today. If you're looking for somewhere to be, ain't no need of you leaving here today. Let me say that slow. Ain't no need of you leaving here today. Still looking for somewhere to go. Amen. There's no need of you. Amen. I pray that you receive what God had for you in the word of God. Were you blessed by the word today? Amen. Let me just say, uh, this lady over here with the children, that's my banker. Okay. Amen. I, I gave her a card and invited her to church, and she's here this morning. We praise God for her. Please fill out that form so we can let you know how much we appreciate you. Please keep all of OWBC, our family and our friends in your prayers. Amen. Those that are sick, shut in, bereaved, having procedures done, or have had procedures done. We want you to know that we are praying for you. Don't forget, beginning next Sunday begins our financial contribution $25 in addition to your tithe and your offering. Don't take it from your tithe. Don't take it from your offering. In addition, amen. The ministry building is now available for use for our ministries. The ministry building is now available for use 
for our ministries. Amen. Um, now the VSL will be setting up their equipment to do their news you can use uh, over there. So that's where their permanent place will be for that. But others may use the ministry building. Brothers and sisters, please let us continue to pray for Ukraine. And we don't have to go anywhere across the water. Please pray for Buffalo, New York and Uvalde, Texas. Those parents that dropped off their children to school expecting to pick them up. Lord have mercy. And the lives that were lost with the students and the teachers. Amen. That's why I ask you when you see our safety, please tell them thank you. Because we feel safe in here while they're out there. Amen. So we want to definitely let them know that we really do appreciate. And I'm going to tell you something. Don't think we're nothing special. Because but for the grace of God, any of that could have happened to us. We don't have to be at church. You can be at Walmart, H-E-B. I was about to say Piggly Wiggly, but they ain't got them no more. Safeway, they ain't got them no more. Echo Drug, they ain't got them no more. So, but for the grace of God, it could be any of us. So, my brothers and sisters, pay attention when you're coming out of stores. You ain't got time to linger. Get in your car and go. Don't blow your horn at nobody. Wait or go around. Because too much is happening nowadays. Amen? Please keep that fam those families lifted up. And then the lady that got killed and her husband had a heart attack and died. Church, we need to pray. Who was that that came out with that song said, we, we got to pray just to make it today? Who was that? Well, whoever that said, I can't hear. MC Hammer. MC Hammer. All right, all right. So, we, we and brothers and sisters, we got to pray just to make it today. Amen? All right, so let's pray, pray, pray. Not, not only that, but think about it. We have a milk baby formula shortage in the richest country in the world. What's going on? I believe that Marvin Gaye said, what's going on? I do know who that was. <laughs> we need to pray. We need to pray. We need to pray. Now, let me share this with you. Each of our ministries here at OWBC are looking for you. Whoever you are, and you're not a part of a ministry, we are looking for you to be a part of this ministry and to make her, when I say her, the church is a female, what God would have her to be. God's coming after his bride, and that's the church. Amen. So if you if you sitting down and you're a bench member, uh, there's no such thing. The Bible said, work out your soul's salvation. He didn't say sit it out. He said, work it out. Amen. We need you. And we want you. Amen. Now, I love you and I'm praying for you. And uh, likewise, you continue to do the same for Lady A and myself. Please remain safe. Have a phenomenal week. Don't let the devil steal your joy. And we're going to stand now, and I'm going to give the benediction. We'll sign off. Then I got one more thing that I want to say. Off the air. Amen. But I'm going to give the benediction for those that are listening so they may be receive the benediction. <clears throat> Let's receive this benediction. May the Lord bless and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his confidence upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. All the church said amen, amen, and amen. Now as you stand, we're going to worship God through the giving of our tithe and our offering.
let me know when you're off, brother. 